In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a grenade. So let's say you're surrounded by zombies and you need a grenade. Well, I made some grenades and they're spawning here. I'm going to pick them up. So I made them as a tool and they're very accurate. So I'm going to hit this zombie right here. It's going to bounce off them because it's a grenade. It's not going to blow up on contact. It blows up after a certain period of time. Let's get this guy. Brah, that's pretty cool. So we'll make some grenades and I'll show you how to make them real accurate. Let's do another one, one more. Sweet. All right, let's go ahead and get started making our grenades. I'll go ahead and get an empty base plate right here, open that up. And we're gonna get a mesh for our grenade. You could just use a part, like a sphere, but people make these really cool meshes. They bring them in from like Blender or Tinkercad. Let's go ahead and get a mesh. I'll look for grenade. Look at that. And I think that's the one I used in my demo. I like this one though. Let's try this out. Make it a little bit different. Sweet. All right. We're going to change the color of that grenade. How about like a green, dark green? Cool. Now the size isn't right, but in order to get the size, I think I'm going to go over to the avatar tab and then go to rig builder. I'm going to get my character, my avatar. I use R15. If your game is R6, do this with R6, right? So I'm, I'm just going to do R15. If you don't know the difference between R6 and R15, pick R15 because that's the default. All right, cool. Now let's, let's see what it looks like when we put it in his hand. I'm gonna to have to make this into a tool. So I'm gonna to go to workspace, hit the plus, hit a T, there's the tool. The tool is gonna to be called grenade. There we go. I'm gonna drag that uh, mesh part into the grenade tool. And then I'm just gonna call this handle. I used to make a separate part for the handle, but now that Roblox improved their grip position and orientation, I just make that the handle. Let's drag this down into our rig. Sweet. Now that's really big, right? We gotta make that smaller. Let's go to home, scale, and I'm gonna hold down the shift, and then you'll see some options come up. Depending on whether you're in like some beta testing and stuff like this, those options could change around, so read them. But the shift and the click and hold is what I'm doing right now to make this smaller. And the shift, what it does is it scales everything the same way. There we go, that's pretty good. Yeah. It's coming through his hand a little bit. I think what I'm gonna do is orient it up a little. We don't really have to spend a lot of time on this because it's Roblox, but it'll be good to know how to do that. So we have, if you select the tool itself, right? This grenade right here, and not the handle. We're gonna to go to grip, and we have position and orientation. So orientation are the angles. Let's move this up on the red, but don't grab this, because that's gonna change the orientation of the tool. What we wanna do is change the grip. So let's go to orientation here under grip, and red is the X, so that's the first number. I'm gonna change this to 20. Nothing happens. That seems to be the case when you change the size of it, it's already in the rig, it's a little glitchy. Let's just drag it out here to the workspace real quick and drag it back into the rig and you could see now it's pointing down. So my 20 was wrong, I need to do a negative 20 and now I can just adjust it right in place. But if I change the size again, I'm gonna to have to drag it out. Right, that's just a Roblox glitch right now. You might not even have it. I think I'm gonna move the grenade over a little bit. Let's take a look at our lines. So we'll move it over on the X a little bit. I think that'll do it. Should we move it up? Nah, I think we're good like that. Let's just move it. Might need to move it down a little, if anything. So we'll go to position. Uh, the red, this one going across is the X. So, is it gonna be negative or positive? I'm just gonna move it like 0.1. Ah, that's nice, that's nice. And I think that looks good enough, right? Good enough for a Roblox game. It's a little bit too far over. Maybe I'll make it 0 0.05, 0 0.05. 
and I maybe bump it down a little bit. That's the blue, so that's this last one. I think I'd have to go negative 0 0.05. We'll find out. Yeah, there we go. All right, that's pretty good. Sweet. Now what we can do is start adding the animation for the throw. Let's just go ahead and go to the side here. And I'm going to go to Avatar again. And then we'll go to Animation Editor. And if, if this doesn't show up, just kind of turn it on and off again, because sometimes that happens. Go ahead and click the rig, and we're going to make an animation. I'll call this uh, throw. How about like grenade throw? Grenade throw, so we don't get it confused. And we can move this up a little bit if I can get it. Good. Now that hat's going to mess me up, so I'm just going to delete his hat. Right? We can always get another rig if we want the hat. Oh, and let's, we'll get rid of the messy hair too. Because right, I want to move his head, and I don't want to be gripping that hat. Sweet. Let's go to these three dots over here on the lower left. And we're going to set the animation priority to action. I know you can't see these down here, but that's all right. Just hit the action. All right, and then we'll save it so we don't lose it. Cool. Now, action overrides movement. So if you're running, the action will override the run. But if you don't mess with the keyframes and his legs and stuff, the run's still going to look normal. It's only going to override the keyframes that we create here in the action. Let's go ahead and pop the pin off of that grenade. I'm going to go to rotate. I have it on 15 degree stud increments. I usually work with that. And we're just going to pull that grenade up. There we go. And we're going to get the other arm because we're going to yank the pin. Just move that this way. Sweet. And he's going to reach in. That'll be good. Just gonna reach in. I'm gonna grab that blue. See that little L? That's a local local rotation. Oops, I didn't get the arm. If you want to change from local to global, right? What is it? Control L. Watch the little watch the little uh, the little turny things, the little rotate things. Ah, see that? That's global. So it's in world space. And if I do a control L again, it's back to local space. I like local for most of my stuff. Now, I want to make sure and get keyframes for all of his upper body parts. So I'm just grabbing the body parts, not the legs, though, or the torso. And here, I might move this arm with this hand in a little bit. Boom. There we go. You don't have to actually make a movement. You just have to bump it, and then you can bump it back, and it'll be fine. There'll be a keyframe. These keyframes are forming down here. But that way, our run won't interfere. Our run animation won't interfere with our throw if we're moving. So I'm going to get that upper torso. I'm going to get his head to maybe I'll have him look down at it. Yeah, he's working on the grenade. Sweet. Now let's grab these keyframes right here and do a copy. Let's go out three frames. So this unit, this unit of measurement is in seconds frames. So this is an entire second up to here. And these are the frames within the second, this the zero three. So I'm going to paste here. And I'll do paste keyframes. And then I think I'm just going to have them sit there for a second. I'm not going to change anything there. I'm going to make another copy of those keyframes out here. Paste keyframes. That's pretty good. And this is where he's going to pop it out, right? And he's just going to bump. Yeah. And he's going to be all happy with it. There. That's pretty good. I might, I might make another copy of that too, right? Copy selected, paste keyframes. All right, now I am going to modify this for the throw. I want to start right from there. So I am going to do another copy and paste. Sweet. And he's going to lean back. Let's do that first. We'll lean him back. And he's going to twist. And this arm's going to come back. I'm going to grab that upper arm there. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then let's have him look forward. Oh, I lost his head. There we go. Get that green. Sweet. Think that's good enough? Maybe have him lean back a little more. 
I'm not going to mess with his legs because I want him to be able to run normally. But you could have like a leg up in the air or something like that. That'd be pretty cool. All right. Now, wherever that blue bar is, it's going to change the keyframe. So hopefully it only changed them right here and not these other ones. It did, right? It did. I, I know it did. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to hold that position just three more frames. Paste keyframes. Let's see what we got. Let's play it. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Let's grab this file or uh, copy. I know we'll hear base keyframes. And now on this one right here, remember the blue lines right here, you have to be careful that you're going to put it. Let's put one intermediate frame in there because we don't want Roblox to optimize the movement too much. I don't want that green. I want that red a little bit, maybe. That'll work. And then he's going to move a little bit. Yeah, maybe down a little bit. Sweet. And then let's grab those. I'm not going to cop. I'm not going to make another hold on that one. This one here is going to be the completion of the throw. So I'll do copy, copy selected. I think I already did that twice. Paste keyframes. And then this is the finish, right? So we're going to move him up, move his torso this way. And then we'll move him forward a little bit because he's doing the throw. Uh, the arm could move a little bit, right? We'll get the arm. Ah, there we go. All oh, that blue is going to be hard to get. Oh, bummer. Let's do this. Sweet. Maybe twist his hand a little bit. Get the hand. What's that green do? Yeah, that'll be good. And then maybe have the hand up a little bit for the release. Cool. All right. And now the head, he's going to look in the way of the throw. Not that one. Let's see. Green. Yeah. And then maybe bump up the red one. And then this arm maybe will go back to. Right. Going to throw it. Oh, man. I lost it. Maybe bend. Maybe bend. the. Maybe bend this one. I think that'll work. I think that'll work for our video, right? What do we got? That's not bad, right? Cool. All right, let's save that off. Let's go to the three dots. I'm going to hit save again in case I want to modify it in my game. I'm going to hit these three dots again. I'm going to go publish to Roblox. There we go. And for some reason, it makes the screen really big. And you can't always see that save. So yeah, I had to shrink that window down a little bit. So grenade throw, that's cool. It is an animation. I am going to save. Now I'm going to need this number right here. This is my asset ID for the for the animation. I'm going to click those boxes. It says ID copy. Now close this. Now I can get rid of this window for now. I'm going to look at my grenade. It is in the rig. We could drag them out of there. We could drag it out of the rig. Cool. And we don't have any stuff in here. The first thing I want to do is I want to hit the plus, hit an A, and grab this animation. Right? And then before I do anything, I'm going to go down to where it says animation ID on the animation. And I'm going to paste that number. Oh, I didn't lose it, did I? Control V. Nope, there it is. Good. Sweet. We don't want to lose the number. All right. And then let's just name this something like... Uh, Throw an M. Cool. Now, some of you guys watch a lot of my videos, so you know how I usually do tools, right? I got my grenade, and then I'm going to add a local script, right? And that's going to handle all the clicking and stuff like that. So when you click on things, it's going to throw the grenade. Oh, uh, let's do uh, throw for the local, and then let's hit the, hit the grenade again. Hit the plus, and now we're going to need a server script, right? So we had a local. That's the throw. The server script, I usually call this damage. It's just my convention. That's going to do the damage, of course, but it's going to do some other stuff too. And now we're going to need a remote event so that we can talk in between the. We can send information from the throw to the damage script. So we're going to hit this plus, hitting R, remote event, and then I'm just going to call that. Throw R E, 
throw R E. Sweet. Now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a event to the keyframes on the animation. Let's go back to our game. Uh, let's go to the animation editor. And the real reason I'm doing this is so you know how to add the events, right? Because I typically just wait for the animation to end and then I release the grenade and apply the force. But you might want to say, let go of the grenade right here. Maybe we'll do that. Let's do that. So with this event, this uh, keyframe set selected right here at the 18th frame, I'm going to right click. If I can get it, there we go, right click. I, I clicked on that diamond. And then let's look for add animation event here. And then maybe we'll call it like release. So I just hit that add event plus sign. And then I'll just do this. I'll say release. And we won't put any parameters in here. So now when we run the animation, this could actually fire off an event. It will fire off an event and we can catch it. And we have to republish it to Roblox. So hit your dots, ooh, save it. Hit your dots again, publish to Roblox. And we want the same number, right? So in order to get the same number, let's overwrite existing asset down here in the bottom left. Now remember, I had to shrink this window to see that. Some people have been making comments that they don't see it. There we go. Now, grenade throw. Let's click that, and then let's hit save. That's gonna give me the same number. Notice these last three digits, two, five, nine. If I close this, and I go over to my grenade, throw an M, close this. The last three digits, oh, I know that's really small text there. I can't really enlarge that, but it is. 259. So it's the same animation ID. So let's go to our local script. Let's see, grenade, throw, and we'll start populating that. Let's get rid of this print statement. Oh, I'll make this a little bigger so you can see it easier. There we go. Get rid of this print statement. We're going to get a variable for the tool. So we'll say local tool equals script dot parent, and then we'll get the throw animation. I'll call it throw anim from the tool, right, colon, wait for child, and throw an M, there we go, and then let's get our remote event, throw RE, that's also in the tool, so we'll say tool, wait for child, throw RE, what else, oh, might as well get the player service, right, players, we might need that, equals get, or game, get service, player service, there we go, just players, and then we'll do a player, right? We want to get a local player. So we'll say player equals, how about players dot local player. Remember, this only works on local scripts and this is a local script. So we're good. Let's get the mouse, All right? We'll say mouse equals player get mouse. And a lot of times I do this in the equipped uh, function, but I think I'm just going to do it up here. Oh, uh, let's get a connection for our activated event, right? So when we click on stuff, so we'll do a connection equals nil. And let's get a variable for the char. We don't have it yet, right? This local script is going to play when the grenade is assigned to the player. So either they pick it up or it's in the starter pack or something like that. So let's keep some of these nil for now. We'll populate them when we need them. Oh, and the track for... I'm losing it a little bit. The track for our animation, uh, local. We need to know when to release. So we're going to get the clicked target. Oh man, there we go. Nil. And then let's get the clicked position. Clicked POS equals nil. Yeah, that's pretty good. I know there's a lot there. We're going to do, we're going to do something with everything. All right, so let's do our three main functions for a client side tool event. I just scrolled down a little bit. We'll do a local function, one for activated. So if you click on something on activated, let me move my mouse away. Cool. And now we'll just do a print. We'll say print activated. We're going to check things out before we get too far. 
right? And then we're going to get our tools equipped, right? Equipped. Connect that to an anonymous function. And I won't populate everything, but I will make the connection. So let's make the connection, right? We have this variable up here on line seven. Connection equals nil, or we're going to fix that now. We're going to say connection equals tool dot activated. So when the activated event fires from the tool, we're going to connect to on activated, right? And then let's put a print statement here too. Let's just say print equipped. All right, and then we get down here. We're going to do the tool. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to scroll up a little bit. There we go. Hopefully that didn't mesh up too much. I'm going to do a tool dot unequipped connect function. Oh, what did I do? There we go. All right, let's do a print statement. Unequipped. And right, now we'll get the connection and we'll disconnect it, right? We'll disconnect the connection. Disconnect. Maybe save some memory there. All right, let's play this. Make sure we don't have any errors. Let's hit the play button. View, output. There's, this is from our, our damage script. So when we pick up our grenade, here it is over here. Boom. All right. Equipped. If I click on something, it's activated, right? Straight. And then if I go like this, unequipped. Nice. All right. Let's continue on. I am going to close that output window. I am going to turn this off. I'm going to go back to my throw and we're going to work on these functions. I am going to start working on the equipped uh, event, right? When when we pick up the grenade, what happens? So it's going to be put in our hand, either from the backpack or when we get it off the ground. So I can get my character from the tool because it's in my hand. And then I'm going to get the humanoid from the char. I'll say char, wait for child, and then we'll do uh, humanoid. Is that right? Cool. And then let's get the animator from the humanoid. So we'll say hum, wait for child, animator. Uh, let's load the animation and get the track, right? So the track was defined up above. Same with the, the human, the char. So we'll get the animator and then we'll load the animation. Load animation. I don't, that's going to be the throw anim. Throw anim. That gives us a track. Now remember, on the track, we put an event. And actually, we used the marker. We didn't change the keyframe name, so we're not going to use keyframe reached. We're going to use get marker reached signal on the track. That little release thing that we put up on the top of our keyframes. So, and you can move that around. It doesn't actually have to be on a keyframe, right? So let's do a get marker. Of course, it doesn't help us with this one. Reached. Oh, I'm gonna I'm so gonna make a mistake. Signal release and we called it release. Remember we called it release. Get marker reached signal. All right, we're definitely gonna have to test it after this. And then we have our connect. We're gonna use an anonymous function, a function. Now if you put parameters in there, we did not, but if you put them in, you will get your you'll have your parameter value there, right? Like like there. In my get marker reached signal event that we are catching. I'm going to make it simple, right? I'm going to do, I'll just do a print statement for error checking. So print release, and I set, release the grenade. We're not actually releasing it yet. We're going to release the server side, but we might as well go ahead and call that throw re fire server event. We are going to pass in the clicked target and the clicked Position. We are not checking to see if they're nil. If they're nil, he's going to drop the grenade right in front of him. Ah, oh, brah. So, in order for this to fire, we're going to have to play our we're going to have to play our animation, and we're also have to going to get the uh, the clicked target stuff. Right? We gotta we gotta be able to set a trajectory for our grenade server side. So we'll do our clicked target will equal mouse dot target. That could be nil and. In case the hit is nil, I think I'm going to do a check here. I'll say if clicked, how about mouse dot hit, if that exists, then I'll do my clicked position equals mouse dot 
hit dot position and then if it doesn't for whatever reason i'll just make the position nil too there we go and then we got to play the animation all right so we'll have our track we, we we loaded all this stuff up when we picked it up so then we could just do a play that'll work now this when we play it this will fire when the animation plays and reach that signal because we, we connected it and then these we want these values to be the ones where we're actually doing the clicking in the on activate, right? So that's why I used the variables there. That's why I didn't do like mouse.hit and mouse.target. Let's try it. Let's try and play this, see what happens. We should get our print out, view, output, got the grenade, animation plays, release the grenade. Good. Let's go ahead and turn this off. And now it is time to start working on the damage script. That's actually going to be a little easier. Well, I would I wouldn't say easier, but it's going to be it's going to be less stuff. And I'm going to give you the equation. That's the only hard part, right? So we'll do a local tool. We'll get our we'll get a copy of our tool. We'll get a variable for our tool. Script dot parent, and then we need to get the throw re to capture that event where we threw the grenade. So we'll do a wait for child throw re. There it is. And then our throw re on server event connect to a function player player gets passed over target and position all right if position then local char equals player dot character or we'll do a player dot character added wait just in case the character's not ready. And then let's get the, let's get the handle of the grenade because that has a position on it, right? So we'll do a handle, tool.handle, and then we'll do tool.parent equals workspace. We are letting go of our grenade. We could test this now. Let's see if he lets go. Let's hit the play. And then there's the grenade. Let's look for errors. Uh, whoops, I had view, output, throw. Yeah, yeah, I'm good with that, all right? I'm good with that. That's actually even a better throw than in the demo. Let's get the humanoid root part of our player because we've got to start figuring out positions now, right? So we do local HRP equals char, wait for child, humanoid root part. And then we're going to get the difference between our position and where we clicked. So I'll say loc diff equals, uh, how about position minus handle dot position. That should work. And then we want to get the direction too. So that's the difference, but of unit one, right? So it's going to be a unit vector. So this will be the diff unit. Right, so it's a, a vector of magnitude one. We're not looking at the distance. We're just looking at the direction. Uh, what else? Uh, let's do something. So if we got nil for a target, but we still got the position, let's just do target. If target equals equals nil, then we'll just make the difference. Uh, we could do about direction times 35 or something, just or 30. Just randomly throw it in that direction. If we didn't click on a target, like if we clicked in the sky, we don't want it to go way off to the edge of the map. Huh. All right. Uh, now, this is the hard part. We need to get the height of what we clicked on. So I'm going to say math.abs. That's the absolute value. Do I want an absolute value? I don't need that. Let's do just the, just the diff in y. That should do it. All right, and then I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna scroll this up a little bit. We're gonna recalculate the distance real quick, like, and we're gonna take the, the Y component out. So I'm just doing X, Z distance for my calculation. All right, so we'll do distance of vector three, diff X, zero, diff y z 
magnitude. So that gets the distance on the X and the Z without the Y component. And then local, I want to get my direction without my Y component. So that's going to be pretty much the same. So vector three, new, well, it's going to be exactly the same. I could have just cut and paste. You know, it's going to take me longer to, to try and cut and paste it. I'll just do this. All right. I'm taking the, I'm taking the, the, the Y out. Right. And here it's just going to be the unit vector, not the magnitude. All right. Uh, now I need my velocity. I need to calculate the velocity. Uh, any of you physics people can tell me if I made any errors, but it seems to be pretty accurate. Right. So I do vel for velocity. I'm going to get math dot square root. I'm going to do a couple parentheses, two times 1.962 times the distance. And then we're going to do to the second power. And then I'll do a divided by distance. I, I, I'll put this in the, in the description. Math dot square root of three, what else do I need? Oh, and then I need to subtract H minus H, right? And then I'm going to multiply all that, let's go to the next line, by dir plus vector three dot new zero math dot square root to the third and then Put a zero there, we're only doing Y here. Unit. How did I get this? I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I put it in the chat GPT. <laughs> so that's how I got it. It's been a long time since I took a physics class. So we'll do handle assembly linear velocity equals val. All right, I get it. Hopefully I have, I have no errors. Let's check to see how accurate our throw is. Let's go over to our workplace. I'm going to put it, I got him to throw at, but I also want to, let's move our, our, our thing up right here so we can, sh we can, we can fire down, right? That way we'll land up here. Let's move him. Now I don't have an explosion on it yet. Oh, you know what? I should put that in my backpack. Oh, well, we could still, still test it this way. Let's take a look at our output window view. Oh, that's pretty good. I hit him. What about close? Yeah. All right. Let's put that in our backpack and see if we can rain down on him. All right. So we're here. And then where's my, where's my grenade? There it is. I'll drag this down here. Starter pack. I mean, right? Starter pack. Let's hit the play. All right, here we go. Yeah, I got him. Now I'm going to try and hit the, the spawn location. I hit it right on the edge. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. What happens if we go to the sky? Yeah, it just goes out about 30 studs. That's a pretty good throw. All right, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. What about... This square right here, pretty good, pretty good. All right, I just turn that off. I'm gonna get rid of that window. I'm gonna go back to my damage script. We have to add our explosion. Let's scroll up a little bit so you got a little more room. And we hit our target. So I'm gonna need a debounce. I only want the explosion to go off once. So I'll have can touch equals true. And then handle dot touched event connect function other part right so if we touch something now we could just time it we could just have it go off after three seconds i'm going to do a little bit of timing and a little bit of contact stuff so if can touch right then can touch will be false we'll turn it off right so touch something we're going to blow something up but we might want to wait a little bit, like two seconds, right? Or, or one second or something. Yeah, let's try one second. One second, all right? And then I think what, 
I don't even know what a real grenade is. It's like three seconds or something uh, after you release something, right? So uh, grenade people comment in the descriptions or in the, in the comments so other people will know how to time it, right? So I'm going to make an explosion here. Instance, new, explosion, and then we'll just put that in the workspace. Now we need the position, all right? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the explosion position uh, that could be, how about where the handle is currently, right? So position. And then blast radius. Don't go too crazy on this. Uh, blast radius of 20 is a lot, right? And then the handle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it invisible before I get it out of the world. Because if I destroy the grenade too quickly, you're not going to get the effects of the blast. So we'll do the transparency of the handle will equal one and then we need a sound right right we'll put the sound we'll put the sound right here and then we'll do uh wait say four seconds for the sound you make it three whatever whatever your sound is then we'll say tool destroy all right as you get a sound right because roblox doesn't have a sound we could we could try it let's try it it's in our backpack isn't it it's got everything but the sound now Oh, look at that, rolled away too far. You guys can play with that. I'll show you what to do. So everything looks good. All right, let's get back. Dog stopped barking. I'll turn this off. And we need a sound. And then we're going to shorten the time too because that rolled away too far. Although not really unlike real life, I, I imagine. And we'll do home. And go to toolbox. Let's look for some audio. All right, what I'm going to do, uh, like, like boom or grenade, grenade, that should do it. That's five seconds. That's all right. We can cut, we can cut that time off. It doesn't have to be five full seconds on the grenade, on the handle, all right? We'll do that. Hit insert. There it is. I'll just rename this like boom. Sweet. And then we'll go to damage. So that rolled away after it touched the guy. I think I'm going to shorten that up a bit. I'm going to make it 0.5 seconds. And then we need to get that sound. I'm going to make a variable up here for the sound, right? So if I go to change it, I'll do SND for sound. And that's going to be tool dot handle. And we got our boom, right? Should we do a wait for child? I think we're all right on the server side script. Yeah, let's do a wait for child. Wait for child and then boom. If you get an infinite yield error, it means you're not getting your handle fast enough. We could just put it down here. That's the safest. Nah, it's fine. Because we got a lot of them. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do this. Got a lot of got a lot of grenades. Let's go to here. And then we'll play it. All right, and it's going to cut off after four seconds because we're going to destroy it. So the sound's going to be destroyed uh, before it finishes because it's a five-second sound. I think that looks good. Let's let's try it. You want to make a couple of them in here? You want to duplicate it? Let's do this. Control D, Control D. Now we got three. Hit play. Got a grenade. Yeah, that's pretty good. Hit a body part. I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit that shoe. Cool. And then let's see if we can hit upwards, right? Oh, that's gonna bounce back at us. Oh, good. We didn't blow up, but you can die from it, right? It is just an explosion. It. It doesn't matter if you're the enemy or not.